I take great pride in my ability to read a room. And I've been getting the vibe that in 2024, what everybody secretly wants is a kazoo with auto-tune built in. Because if you don't know how kazoos work, you essentially have to sing in this to play it. And nobody's got time to get good at singing, right? We have software for that now. In case you haven't listened to any music that's been released in the past 20 or so years, Auto-Tune is a software plugin that you can apply to a piece of recorded audio and it will automatically modulate the pitch of that audio such that it always matches a note in a given musical scale. So if you have a recording of a vocalist singing over a piece of music, you can apply Auto-Tune to the vocals and set the scale to be a set of notes that works with that music. Essentially, the singer can never be off-key. So this kazoo does exactly that. It takes the sound of my voice, it does its best to detect the pitch that I'm humming every couple milliseconds, then it shifts it up or down to the closest correct note and pipes the sound back out. And as you may have gathered from the intro, it does a few other things as well. It can work as a wireless MIDI controller, so you can use it to control just about any synthesizer, and you can also play it as a standalone synth. So you can play it with a piano keyboard controller if you wanted to, which I think is hilarious. So now I'm gonna tell you how it works. And I'm gonna keep it as high level as I can for most of this video. So if you're not into building electronics or writing software, stick around. And if at any point I lose you, tell me where so I can do better next time. Okay, some of you have already hit me with the clickbait allegations, I'm sorry and also thank you for your engagement. This kazoo does not have auto-tune in it. Auto-tune is a proprietary piece of software, but people generally use the name to describe the concept of real-time pitch correction. I only use the name because that's what most people know it as. Please don't sue me. The even bigger lie here, and what ultimately made this a challenging and interesting build, is that the sound you're hearing is not entirely my voice. Let me explain. The standard kazoo's signature buzzy sound comes from a small piece of paper or plastic embedded within the little port at the top here. When you hum into the kazoo, the vibrations cause the paper to flap around and that adds harmonics to the sound. That's the buzzing you hear. So my initial thinking when I approached this project was that I could put a little microphone inside the kazoo here, run the sound through some auto-tune, and then pipe it back out through a tiny speaker also inside the kazoo, and that speaker would move the membrane for me. So essentially intercepting my voice and replacing it with a pitch corrected version of itself. But there are a few problems with this. The first is that any speakers that I could find to fit inside this kazoo were gonna be too small to fully reproduce the sound of my voice. They all sounded really thin and weak and they just couldn't move enough air to really move the membrane. Even more importantly, I realized that having the microphone and speaker so physically close to each other meant that the microphone was gonna pick up the sound from the speaker just as much as it was gonna pick up my voice. So as soon as I turned it on, it started feeding back and screaming. I even tried moving the speaker outside the kazoo, even though I didn't want it there. But at the end of the day, a plastic tube is just no home for a microphone. It's too resonant and ringy, and the sound it picked up was just gonna be unusable. So I was able to solve the microphone proximity problem first. And I did that by putting the microphone in my mouth. And so you can see when I turn this around, this little black dangly bit here, that is a microphone. And I put it under my tongue whenever I start playing the kazoo. But unfortunately the speaker problem remained 
and actually got worse because now the speaker was not trying to reproduce the sound of my humming recorded from out here. It was trying to reproduce the sound of the inside of my mouth, which sounds gross and terrible. I put the project aside for a little while and eventually inspiration struck. I wondered if rather than having the speaker try to move the membrane, I could just have the speaker replace the membrane. And if you look, that's exactly what I did. That's a little black speaker in there where the paper used to be. If I could add the buzzy harmonic sounds in software, I could have the speaker act as the primary output sound of the kazoo. And this definitely worked, but it still didn't sound quite right. So certain notes were picked up louder than others, and the sounds of the microphone moving around in my mouth were still kind of distracting. So I decided to cheat. I know exactly what I want the kazoo to sound like, and I know exactly what note it should be playing at any given moment. So why not synthesize the sound? What you're hearing is actually a sawtooth wave being played at the exact frequency that the pitch detection algorithm has detected from my humming. If the algorithm can't make a good guess as to which note I'm humming, the speaker just turns off. I chose a sawtooth wave because it sounds exactly like a kazoo pretty much right out of the box, and it's also really, really easy to generate and code. I think it sounds pretty much perfect in this context, and now I don't have to worry about where the microphone is sitting in my mouth or if it's moving around. And as a bonus, this implementation is what allows me to control the kazoo with external MIDI messages. Yes, I'm sorry to report that the nipple is gone. Anyways, I'm going to blast through a bunch of the technical details for those of you who are interested, or you can check out the documentation, which will be linked below. Everything will be open source. For the microphone, I used one of these cheapo I2S microphones from Amazon. I really like that they transfer the audio digitally and thus are relatively low noise, but they do require a higher end microcontroller and a bit more soldering if those are things you care about. I surrounded the microphone with some soft foam. I 3D printed a little enclosure to go around that, and I hot glued all of that shut. I don't know how much hot glue and PETG is safe to accidentally swallow, so I don't necessarily recommend this solution. <laughs> I did also try to use one of these piezo discs with this cool metal marshmallow contact mic preamp, because I figured a contact mic might be better for an in-mouth application, but I couldn't figure out a way to enclose it so that it would pick up the sound of my humming, but wouldn't also be distorted by the movements of my mouth muscles and teeth. For the microcontroller, I decided to use the ESP32 S3 because it is happy to pipe audio in both directions via I squared S. And it has built-in Bluetooth, which is what I use to send MIDI messages in and out. I specifically chose to use the Seed Studio Zhao ESP32 S3 development board because it's so small and affordable. If you've seen my projects on this channel before, you know I love these Zhao boards. For the pitch detection itself, I used an implementation of the Yin Fundamental Frequency Estimation Algorithm by Rob Smith Dev, who adapted his implementation from the one found here. He's got a great video of getting it working with an Arduino Uno from a few years ago, which I was very excited to find because I knew if he could get it working on such a limited microcontroller, it would be no problem to adapt for the ESP32. And I was right, it worked pretty much right out of his zip file. I had to make a few teeny tiny changes, but yeah, it's been great. I'm using this battery from Adafruit, this battery booster and charger from SparkFun, this audio amplifier from Adafruit, and this speaker from Adafruit. Oh, and these jumbo kazoos from Amazon. And that's it. The last thing I wanna talk about before turning this off is my feelings about auto-tune in general. This project is hopefully, obviously a bit tongue in cheek. I'm playing on the perception that auto-tune is ruining music by making it too easy to sound like a good enough singer. I think that's mostly bull and I will say unapologetically that I think auto-tune is rad. It's a tool, it's an effect, it's a way to achieve a very particular sound. 
and it's incredibly fun to play with. If you have played with it, you already know that it can't magically make a bad singer sound good, at least not secretly. You are, of course, entitled to your own opinions on its usage, but if you are a vocal auto-tune hater, I would encourage you to look into all the different ways that your favorite artists, yes, yours, use studio magic to enhance the sounds of their recordings. Everybody does it to some degree. I'm going to link to a video by an audio engineer who goes by Greasy Will, who tells a story about working with another older audio engineer who he witnessed placing his hand on a tape deck as it was playing to slow down the tape deck slightly in an effort to correct the pitch of an old vocal recording as it was being bounced down for a new release. People have been doing this forever. So don't be so judgy. That's all I got.